Hello everyone, I wanted to talk briefly today about uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. You probably know Peterson if you're watching this channel from our series on uh, his book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. Uh, Jordan Peterson, if you don't know, is a right-wing self-help guru, uh, not a particular fan of trans individuals, uh, lied a lot about the C-16 bill in Canada, um, has been on Joe Rogan, he has a daughter named Michaela, who I'm going to be talking about during this, who is a proponent of a so-called lion diet, in which you eat only meat, salt, and water, um, which he has promoted in the past, and today I'm here to talk about him because he's in... A bad spot and I wanted to talk about how him being in this spot is a result of his own ethos and how it's interesting how we can trap ourselves in situations that could be avoided if we'd only open ourselves up to different ways of thinking because in a strange way Jordan Peterson has become a victim of his own ideology now, there are a lot of people that we talk about on this show that I think are completely full of shit that don't believe the bullshit they're peddling. Ben Shapiro, I think, is one of those people. And for a long time, I thought Jordan Peterson is one of those people. And to an extent, I still believe that. But he definitely believes about bootstraps. He believes in rugged individualism and the hero's journey that each individual is on. He doesn't believe in collectivist thinking. Uh, and I think the predicament he's gotten himself into is pretty emblematic of that. So, for those of you who haven't heard, Jordan Peterson is having complications and apparently issues stemming from being put in a medically induced coma in Russia. This sounds like an Onion article, I know, but it's true. So what happened was Jordan Peterson, author of 12 Rules for Life, became addicted, dependent, physically, on benzos. Specifically, uh, if you've heard of clonopin, it's that kind of benzodiazepine. Um... That happened shortly after, if you remember, way back when we were doing the 12 Rules for Life series, we used a clip of him on Joe Rogan where he's talking about, oh, I drank some apple cider and I had an autoimmune reaction and I couldn't sleep for a month. I believe this is the incident he's talking about. And from that incident, he was put on benzos. I don't know how, how that happened. Honestly, it probably had more to do with his meat-only diet than eating cider, but that's neither here nor there. That's not relevant to the story. <sighs> so he gets on these benzos, and then unfortunately after that, his wife is um, diagnosed with cancer. This puts him into a spiral, seemingly, where he starts taking the benzos more regularly. And from this he became... His daughter Michaela claims he was never addicted, just dependent. But, it seems to me, 99% of the time those things goes hand in hand. It seems to me that that's more a way to try and sidestep the idea that Jordan Peterson is a hypocrite. Because within 12 Rules for Life, Jordan Peterson expresses a clear derision for addicts. Uh, now, he might openly say, like, oh, I don't hate addicts, I just think it's their own fault and they need to do something about it. But it's very clear from his writing, he despises drug users. Um, he talks about a friend in here who smokes marijuana, um, and he has a clear view of this person as lesser than him because of that. So, it seems the narrative his family is trying to push is, he's not addicted, he's dependent. Which, he is dependent, but he's probably also addicted. Either way, he seeked out medical intervention for this addiction, for this physical dependence, in Canada, where he is a citizen. And, <clears throat> as some of you may or may not know, when you're stepping down from benzos, what you do is you typically taper. You, you 
slowly reduce the amount over time because the withdrawals, if you just stop, are incredibly severe um, and could be harmful to you as an individual because it, uh, benzos are a sedative and what they do is they can lower your heart rate and stuff like that and if you become physically dependent on them and you suddenly stop, your heart rate can go up incredibly high, you feel an insane am amount of anxiety. Um, you have all sorts of awful physical things happening to you. Now, Jordan Peterson, this is where the his own preconceptions makes him get in his own way. Jordan Peterson, being this individual who believes in Jungian ar archetypes, and this person who believes that each individual should function as this rugged individual who can pull themselves up by their bootstraps and save themselves and they don't need any help from anyone and they just need to do what they need to do. Jordan Peterson was obsessed with this idea of stopping cold turkey on benzos, which is incredibly dangerous if you've been using them for a long time. However, he decided he needed to do that, but he could not find a provider in Canada who was willing to do that because of the inherent medical risks involved. So instead of opening himself up and say, hey, maybe there's something wrong with what I'm thinking about this, because bear in mind, Dr. Jordan Peterson is a doctor, but he's a psychologist, not a medical doctor. Jordan Peterson has a problem that a lot of people on the right have, and that is the belief that they and their ideas somehow trump experts that their beliefs and their knowledge their common sense is somehow more valuable in terms of utility than those who've spent years and years studying whatever particular subject is at hand so jordan peterson being a rugged individual got himself and his daughter michaela and they got on a plane and they flew to russia a country which has very conservative drug laws that would allow him to get off the benzos cold turkey, despite the fact that most Western countries would consider that incredibly dangerous and not something you should do. Uh, according to Michaela, once he got off the plane in Russia, he was also diagnosed with pneumonia. I'm not a medical doctor. I have no idea if that relates in some way to the benzos, but... Michaela blamed this on Western doctors, blamed it on the Canadian doctors, and said that somehow they gave him pneumonia. Um, now, I'm sure there are ways in which one can get pneumonia in a hospital, sure, but <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it seems like an interesting claim specifically coming from her. Let's just let that one go. Anyway, once it gets to Russia... He is able to talk to the doctors and convince them to put him in a medically induced coma, which is not something that is done in the U.S. or Canada to step people off of benzos because we do the taper. They make it less and less and less, and maybe you have other medications you get on that are not benzos but will help you, um, stuff like that, because that's the safe way to do it. But... Jordan Peterson, believing he knows what's right, believing that his brand of rugged individualism, believing his brand of step to itiveness is going to power him through this physical dependence, decides to get the doctors to put him in a medically induced coma, which I believe in Canada and the States they typically only do for very severe cases of alcohol withdrawal. And even then, it needs to be balanced against the risks involved. Putting anyone in a coma for any reason is an incredible risk. Because unless it's done properly and done... I, I don't even know. You know what? I was going to say something there. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But I do know that I talked... Um, I talked to my girlfriend, who is a uh, PhD candidate in, in biology, about this a little bit, about um, putting people into comas. And basically she said, you don't do it unless the risks are outweighed by the risks of not doing it. Um, because putting anyone in a coma is an inherent risk. So they did this. 
They put Jordan Peterson in this medically induced coma. And once they decided to wake him up, there are apparently severe complications that have taken place. Um, cognitively. According to Michaela. Again, all the information from this is coming straight from the family. Because it's medical information and that's the only way you can get it as it is privileged. And we haven't heard from Jordan Peterson in the weeks since he's awoken from his coma. So, I'm fairly certain he's suffering some very severe cognitive declines or possibly just issues <laughs> with, I don't even know, controlling his body because he's been in a coma for so long? I don't know. But it's clear that something has happened because of this, and he's going to have a very rough time getting back to where he was beforehand. And all of this could have been avoided if he had not been so stubborn and recognized that it's okay to seek help and to listen to experts and to wean off of something instead of trying to be this manly man individual who's going to just stop cold turkey. He was apparently obsessed with stopping cold turkey, probably because he would see himself as lesser in some way if he didn't do that. Even though it's clear, <laughs> it's so clear that that's nothing but ego. It's nothing but, I, I don't even know, this sense of self-importance and this sense of superiority that's damaging, not just to others, through things like his book, which, if you need to know what that's about, check out our playlist where we read the whole thing. But it can be self-damaging to the extent that it, it, it can destroy your life. So, I don't know. I don't know what the message is here, other than it's okay to seek help. It's okay to listen to experts. In fact, you should, because that's what they're there for. It's okay to be vulnerable. You don't need to put yourself up on this pedestal and say, I'm lesser than if I seek help or do this in this specific way. Because you can wind up in a situation where there are consequences. And it's... I don't know. I don't know. It's not poetic. It's not justice in any way that this happened it's just a shitty thing that happened to him because of his own decisions and i don't know how i thought i saw jordan peterson's story turning out in the long term after doing our series on him but it wasn't this this is just depressing <laughs> like don't get me wrong i don't want jordan peterson out there spreading his bullshit and getting people, especially young men, turned on to, like, right-wing politics and right-wing ways of thinking. But damn, I didn't think it would turn out to be him just fucking his own life up. That's... That's depressing. So, I guess that's it for today. Uh, Jake will be back soon. I believe Monday he'll be back. He's been working, um... On a, at a new job recently so he's been very busy in training but that'll be stepped down to one day a week starting next week so he'll be back and uh yeah stay safe out there i hope everyone's quarantine's going well don't put yourself in any medically induced comas unless absolutely necessary uh, you can always donate to our Patreon campaign if you want to help support the show. I have my transition fund down in the description for those of you who don't know. I came out as trans months ago, and I'm going through a, a medical transition. Um, other than that, until next time, see you guys later.